Welcome. So here I have cosine of 2x, which is the multiple angle, and I have cosine of x plus 1 equals 0. So what they want us to do is they want us to solve. And now we do have two cosines, which is cool, but uh, we don't have them the same, and nor are they like terms. So we're going to have a kind of issue of combining these together. But that's OK, because the way that the problem is set up, we already actually have it as a multiplication problem that equals 0, which is awesome. Because if you remember, when we have a multiplication problem that equals 0, we can apply the zero product property, which states if you have two numbers or two binomials or two monomials or two polynomials or two terms that are multiplied to give you 0, that means a equals 0 or b equals 0. So one of them has to equal 0. So since I have cosine of 2x times cosine of x plus 1 equals 0, I know that one of them has to equal 0. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write that out. Okay, So now I can be able to solve each one of these independently. I don't need to worry about trying to combine and then isolate and everything like that. So now I need to determine is when is cosine of 2x equal to 0 and when is cosine of x plus 1 equal to 0. Now when dealing with the multiple angle, we're going to deal with this exactly how we would with this problem, except at the end we will address the multiple angle. So the first thing we need to do is figure out when is cosine equal 0 and when is it going to equal negative 1. OK, so we go and drop our unit circle. And remember, the cosine represents your x-coordinate, right? So we have four main intercepts on our unit circle. We have 1, 0, 0, 1, negative 1, 0, and 0, negative 1. So in the first one, we say, when is cosine equal to 0? So that means, when is my x value equal to 0? Well, we have two solutions, right? We have x is going to equal, or I'm sorry, our cosine value is equal to 0 at pi halves and 3 pi halves. So therefore, I can just simply write x equals uh, pi halves and then x equals 3 pi halves. And I'll show you a different way to kind of write this up in a second. Then let's go and look at when is cosine equal to negative 1. Well, the cosine value is only equal to negative 1 at one value, and that is that when x equals halfway around circle is equal to pi. Now remember, when dealing with solving equation, we need to include all the values that are going to make it true. So if you look at this, if I know pi halves is true, that means if I add pi to it, I'm going to get to 3 pi over 2, which is true. Then if I add it a pi again, I'm going to get to um, pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, 5 pi halves. And then I can add it again, and I get 7 pi halves. And I can continually keep on doing this. Now you notice, I can keep on adding 2 pi for this problem, and I can keep on adding 2 pi to this angle. but why keep on doing that when all I simply need to do is, for one angle, just add pi? right? If I had pi halves and then I add the angle pi, I'm going to get to our next solution. If I add pi again, I'm going to get to another solution. Add pi again, so I can keep on adding pi. So therefore, but how many times can I add pi? We don't know, so we're going to leave it with the variable r. Now I look at x equals pi. But this is the only solution where um, my cosine of x equals negative 1. So to keep on finding more solutions, I need to add a full revolution, which is going to be the 2 pi. And then I can keep on doing that r many times. So therefore, I have x equals pi halves plus, I'm sorry, that's 2x equals pi halves plus pi times r, and x equals pi plus 2 pi r. Now, to finish up my multiple angle, we need to solve for x, right? So therefore, what I'm simply going to do is just divide by 2 here, and I get x equals pi divided by 4 plus pi r divided by 2. And over here, I just have x equals pi plus 2 pi times r. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks.